until that thing crumbles and then they change it. And since it's constantly shifting, they don't actually have any real authority. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. It is Good Friday. Happy Good Friday. We'll talk about it in a moment. But today we're going to talk about Passover and what that means. Coming up next. Right, our sponsor, our loan sponsor, coffee. He helps me. He helps me. I've actually been roasting my own beans. It's really fun. You get your own. They kind of like these little pale green beans. Uh, they look like they're not green bean, you know, like that you eat out of a can or in your garden, but like actual they're coffee beans, but they're green. And you roast them in a little, you know, canister. There's different methods you can do it. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, that's not why we're talking. That's not why you clicked on this. You clicked on this because of the thumbnail, because it's fun and silly. But the parting of the Red Sea is intrinsically bound up with Passover. So Passover is what was being celebrated on Thursday night, last night, with Christ and his disciples, right? That's the last supper, the last meal, the Lord's table. We often observe that as Baptists. We do it, you know, once a year or whatever. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But, you know, some churches do it every week, some do it every quarter, some do it once a month. Our church, I feel convictionally to do it once a month. I think that's a good reminder without making it uh, rudimentary and also uh, making it special at the same time without kind of forgetting like, wait, what are we doing here? So I like once a month personally. But anyway, that's what the Lord's Supper is. That's what the Lord's table is, communion, whatever you want to call it. So they're celebrating the Passover, the Passover of unleavened bread. Well, how did they pass over? But with the death angel flying over in Egypt, remember the 10 plagues, and they were 10 plagues against each of the gods of Egypt, going through and conquering each of the gods, and finally conquering the last god, which was Pharaoh himself. That's why his firstborn, similar to some crazy regimes in the world today, the human is seen as God, and his offspring likewise as gods or demigods. So Pharaoh was seen as a god, right? He was believed to be as god, and remember the firstborn, was killed if their blood of the lentil, the not the you know little bean or grain or whatever it is, lentils, but the lentil of your doorpost, right? You put the blood of the lamb on top and it passes over. That's why there's every deep symbolism there. So the Passover is there to show and remember each and every year. So the Jewish uh, custom is, the Hebrew custom is to do this. Some Christians still do this. Some call it a Seder dinner and other things. We've done that one or two times in the past. Uh, my wife and I, and you know, it's not in the Christian calendar. I think maybe if you're a little more liturgical, you might do that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Some people get very fundamentalist crazy and, you know, see anything in the Old Testament and instantly are allergic to it or something, uh, or they see some sort of difference and, but they'll do Halloween and Christmas. I, I don't know. It's, or people won't do anything. Then they're just Jehovah Witnesses, but uh, that's another story. So the Passover, well, the Passover is, happens, and then they pass through the Red Sea. Remember the story? You know, Bible study, grad, Sunday school graduates, VBSers, right? You're going through one of the most famous stories. They're going through the wilderness. Egypt's chasing them. He says, let them go. Let my people go. And then he's chasing them and they go the Red Sea. They're there. And they're, that's it. This isn't normal. And again, this is not normal at all for people to walk through um, a sea, a water, some, something to happen, right? But just like the 10 plagues weren't normal either. Now, you might watch one of the newer movies and see all these things as just naturalistic undertakings, as just explanations of, you know, people, dumb people, so-called, you know, the Hebrews being dumb, ancient people being dumb. This is the uh, assumption of modern man that they were stupid because modern man believes we were stupider and we're getting better. We're getting smarter, right? We're, we're ascending. We're actually really descending because Adam and Eve were created perfect, flawless, and they stumbled into sin. They fell and God cursed the ground. And so we're actually descending. We're going downward, not upward. And a lot of people think otherwise. And that's kind of the main mantra between materialistic evolution, uh, naturalism, and supernatural theism, in particular Christianity, biblical Orthodox Christianity. So I've got red lights behind me. Don't normally do red. I don't have a red shirt. So that's, that's as good as I got. But the Red Sea. Now, there's, of course, people want to explain this away. And I'll tell you why I think they want to explain it away. But we're going to look at an article from LA Times. That's not the article. That's Bible Hub. There it is. 
Article from LA Times, my hometown newspaper, such a conservative bastion of just, you know, straight laced ideas, commonsensical. I'm just kidding. March 14th, 1992. This is 30 years ago. I was a mere lad when this was written. And some of you, maybe you're not even born. Tell me if you were born before or rather after. Either way, 1992. Drop in in the comments. Tell me. So this sophisticated computer calculations. I love it. Right off the bat. Sophisticated. Not rudimentary or crude or, you know, unsophisticated. Sophisticated computer calculations indicate that the Bible, biblical parting of the Red Sea, said to have allowed Moses and the Israelites to escape from bondage in Egypt, could have occurred precisely as the Bible describes it. Well, go figure. Not because, though, God said so. Not because God is powerful and he's the highest height and the deepest depths and he's he's omniscient and omnipresent and he's all powerful. And yet he's near and close. No, no. Let's keep reading. Because a particular geographic of northern end of the Red Sea. Researchers report Sunday, the Bulletin of American Media, more moderate wind blowing constantly for about 10 hours could have caused the sea to recede about a mile and the water level drop off 10 feet. Dry land area, many biblical scholars believe the crossing occurred. Okay. An abrupt change in the wind could have allowed the waters come crashing down. Phenomenon as the Bible inundated the Israelite pursuers. This explanation should not affect religious aspects of exodus well thanks nathan par paul paul door of university of rhode island uh okay but here's the thing what you should let it affect is your religious presuppositions about your beliefs mr nathan because this isn't a like religion and polity sort of you know stained glass closet pray over here and you know by myself and then real world. No, no. The Bible deals with reality. The Bible is written by the author of reality. And so because of that, we can trust it. We can look at history. We can look at many accounts that may not be fully explained yet, although a lot of the ones in the past weren't explained. And then lo and behold, they find evidence and here they are. But anyway, even if they're not explained, we're going to trust the word of God and not people because that's the option. Right. As I said, I, I'll look at it again at some point. But my very first episode of Contra Thoughts uh, last year, last March in 2021, was that it was the Bible is just man's opinion. And again, saying if the Bible is just man's opinion, well, we have man's opinion or we have man's opinion. Right. It's not like there's some other like text that's like, no, 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 the Bible isn't. You guys are all wrong. Actually, this book is God's word. Right. They're not contending for that. They're just saying, I don't like God's word because I don't want. Uh, you thought I was going to say it. No, I'll tell you in a second. We'll get there. So so many some may even find the proposed mechanism to be supportive of the argument. Oh, well, that's a relief. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you. Although few religious scholars or scientists were familiar with the report. OK, I don't really care. It's very plausible, they say. Oh, there's a little ad for something we don't need to buy. Israelite flight described in chapter 14 of Exodus. Yes, the Lord caused a sea to go back on a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land. Look at that. They're quoting the Bible. At least they're doing that. And that's good. They probably wouldn't do that today in 2022, but you never know. Most scholars agree the Israelites did not cross the Red Sea, but the Gulf of Suez. So here's again, here's the thing. We got first thing where they want to, oh, it shouldn't affect your religion. That's number one. But everybody's religious. Okay? Everybody. Everybody believes something about the past, about the present, and about the future. Everybody believes there either is a God or isn't a God. And then what that what to do with that God or maybe multiple gods. But everybody is religious. The lie of neutrality, the lie of kind of this middle road is, oh, I'm not religious. I, just, I don't do that sort of thing. Of course you do. Of course you do. You believe... You have authorities and you believe certain people over other people. You have truth claims and falsehoods and say, I believe this. I think if there's this, then this. And if not this, then not this, right? I believe, hey, when I die, I'm just going back to the dirt. Or when I die, I get to go to the big party in the sky. Or when I die, I'm going to hell, but it's going to be with all my buddies and devil, you know, the devil will be my homeboy or whatever. Or I get 70 virgins or I do this or I'm going to get my own planet. 
you believe something about, even if you're the most secular person, you're still religious. It's your own religion. Just because it's disorganized doesn't mean it's not religious. I love the joke of, I don't like organized religion. It's like, oh, you like disorganized religion. That's fair. So, who is on sabbatical? I don't care about that. Uh, oh, Hebrew University. Oh, he's, so he's from Hebrew University. Okay, well, maybe we do care about that slightly. Uh, so he's at Rhode Island. Of course, it's 30 years ago, so not now. From Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Pretty reputable school. But it's not like it's going to be filled with followers of Christ or even followers of Moses and the Torah. But anyway, it gets kind of boring here. Also important note, see, accommodate the water, the gulf, blah, blah, blah. You can go read the whole thing. I'll put it in the description. Their calculations show the steady northeast wind, 40 to 45 miles an hour, 10 hour period. Right. So it does say the wind blows all night long and they have these sophisticated computer calculations. But, oh, I had my first point and then I forgot my second point. All right, so it's sabbatical. The problem consists of a simple physics, physical laws, which are very well known, a very complicated set of equations that describe what happens to water when the wind acts on it. So again, I want you to just go read this article if you're interested, uh, or at least look at, you know, look at it and see their explanations. And we'll talk about a little bit more in a moment what their explanations really are showing. The wind can lift a lot of water, like blowing across the top of a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee, okay. Coffee blows from what? Coffee blows, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a phenomenon, well, not completely explain the biblical passage, you know, go figure, which says the Israelites had water on both sides of them when they were made the crossing. Exactly. Exactly. One potential objection in the new theory is that researchers postulate a northwesterly wind while the Bible says east wind right there. So they're like, hey, this was blowing northwest, but the Bible says east. And they're like, well, you know, Rach Kadim says here that it can mean northeasterly or southeasterly. But, the, but you're still saying it's west. <laughs> like, and then they just keep going. OK, thanks, guys or author of this article. Other researchers have previously suggested that the Red Sea might be caused by a tsunami. They debunked that right there. And then Red Sea crossing a theory. Sophisticated computer calculations indicate the biblical parting of the Red Sea says to have followed a lot of the Israelites. And then it just kind of summarizes here, the Gulf of Suez. The wind movement occurred in the area, shallow water, where temporarily undersea ridge was located. It could have provided such a stretch of land for the Israelites to go on. So, what, 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 is, what is going on here? Well, first of all, their authority isn't scripture or even God or even somebody smart necessarily who's saying, I'm trusting God in this one. It's science, right? And that's the whole thing is people have this inversion. Science is knowledge. That's what it means. And theology, the study of, so theos or theos is God. Ology is study. So anthropology is study of man. Anthros or anthropos is man, mankind in Greek, and study of man. Study of God, theos, theology, theology, study of God. Theology used to be called the queen of the sciences not that long ago, maybe, I don't know, 200 years ago or so. Now it's not. Now it's seen as, you know, the stuffy whatever, if that, or you're just Looney Tunes idiot. Now it's biology and astronomy and 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 whatever, right? Geology, you name it. But their authority is in that thing until that thing crumbles and then they change it. And since it's constantly shifting, they don't actually have any real authority. Furthermore, they weren't there, particularly with the Red Sea. They don't know. They want to say, well, this happened in the wind and this computer simulation. You don't know the, the situation 3,500 years ago, right? I mean, how in the world are you going back computer simulation? What they're doing probably is using uniformitarianism, which is saying the present is a key to the past. Everything that's happening now has always been happening. Thus, we see the erosion and the this and the rain and the this and the mud and all these other things coming and going, working on the creation. They don't account for, you know, a global flood, for example. They don't account for other cataclysms and other things. And they certainly don't account for God's hand in this whole matter. Not at all. So their authority is just, Man, right? So it's either man 
And if they debunk and say, well, the Bible can't be trusted, well, then it's still man. And of course, they're going to go with their own opinions because nobody ever wants to be wrong, right? And they want convenient opinions. This is mentioned and to the Bible here, and we'll wrap up. This is mentioned multiple times, multiple times in the Bible, like dozens and dozens of times. Red Sea, the crossing, in this, in this, and this. Both, mostly in the Old Testament, though some in the New. Exodus 15, in particular, at the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The depths congealed in the heart of the sea. Exodus 15a, so just after this, the, the account happens in Exodus 14, Exodus 15. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up, the floods stood up in a heap, and the depths congealed in the heart of the sea. KJV, basically the same, New King James, NASB, they're all like identical in this one. Uh, that's not usually the case. That's Exodus 15a, just after that. Psalm 78, great Psalm 13, he divided the sea and led them through. He made the water stand up like a wall. That's NIV, Berean study Bible. He split the sea, split the sea, not a tsunami, right? That doesn't happen with, with there's only one side of wall, water. The other thing is too, if they're this and the water's going and it's pushing all the water to one side, like the guy's blowing a cup of coffee, you know, doing this. There's only one wind. How do we know that it's not cutting straight through the water? That doesn't happen. And see, that's the difference of trying to say, well, you know, Christians, this doesn't affect your religion. No, it doesn't affect my religion. Thank you very much. <laughs> because science constantly changes. The Bible isn't a science textbook. And that's a good thing. Some people use that as like, well, it doesn't really matter where Adam and Eve and this and no and global flood and blah, blah, blah. And Abraham and where he was and horses and donkeys and, and camels. And they didn't really have these things in ancient Near Eastern. And this really shut up. Just stop. Just believe the Bible. It's so much easier. Like, investigate, because the Bible is God's word. We can investigate it. We can take it and hit it with the proverbial hammer as an anvil. And the anvil will wear out the hammer, the skeptic's hammer. And not the other way around. The Bible is the anvil. It is the word of God, or it isn't. Period. Most people these days, even Christians, want to apologize. Oh, hell, hell yeah. No, that's man. Man should apologize to God for his constant rebellion and accept Christ instead. Psalm 78, 13, King James says, divided the sea, caused them to pass through. He made the waters to stand up as a heap. New King James, same thing. Heap, heap. Most of them say heap. Amplified says he divided the Red Sea, right? It's just particular. It's kind of fleshing it out. And allowed them to pass through it. He made the water stand up like a water behind a dam. Thank you, Amplified Bible. That's... Psalm 78, and lastly, Hebrews eleven twenty nine. 29. By faith, people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptian tried to do so, they were drowned. Same thing. Berean literal Bible says they were swallowed up. This is mentioned multiple times. Isaiah 51, was it not you who dried the sea and the waters and the great deep and made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to pass over? Joshua mentions it. First King mentions it on and on and on. This is one of the most greatest accounts in the Old Testament. Easily. And I found two articles. I'm only going to go through the one. I'll link the other one. But they, the, the, my point is not to just castigate the LA Times, but to say that yeah, this might have happened in this sense, right? Okay, God, because he is the king of the universe, right? He does reign and he does uphold the creation. And so in one sense, it doesn't matter if this is exactly how it happened, right? Exactly how it happened. It doesn't matter at all. Why? Because well, God still does it. Of course, they're not giving any credence to God at all. They don't even mention God, Yahweh, Jesus, Lord, nothing, right? And that shows, well, we're, we're up here. We're we're secular. We're, we're not religious. We're standing back here. Of course, they're religious. Everybody's religious. Everybody has a Jesus. Everybody has a God. Everybody is religious. They are. They are. Acts 7 also mentions it. It's only a couple times in the New Testament, mostly in the Old. And ask questions of the scripture. Push. God can handle the questions. And if you don't know Christ, he can handle your unbelief, right? The, the classic example in the Gospels, God, Lord Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. Help, I believe, help my unbelief, right? Because there's still this tension, right? People saw miracles and they still didn't believe. 
So don't think, well, if a miracle happens, well, if God reveals himself to him, he does reveal himself in the Lord Jesus Christ through the scripture. So don't wait on a miracle. Don't wait on some sign. Don't wait on Jesus to show up and, you know, put his arm around you when you're shaving or, you know, in bed and some of these clowns on YouTube talking about this and that. I mean, time would fail us if we pulled up every instance of people talking about how Jesus shows up to them and this and this, that and the other. It's just it's shameful. It's really shameful. God has spoken. God has spoken. Hebrews 1, long ago, and many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, notice that, these are the last days. He has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he inherited is more excellent than theirs. I just want to keep reading. Hebrews is so good. One of my favorites. Easily one of my favorites. Excellent. He is excellent. He is the exact imprint of God. So you see Jesus, you've seen the Father. Trust him. Cling to him. Passover. Celebrate Passover. Don't celebrate Passover. It's it's God's promise. And ultimately, God passes over sin. He passes over your wickedness, your rebellion, your sexual immorality, your theft, your idolatry, your lying, your coveting, your everything in Christ. He forgives us all our sin. All of it. First John tells us explicitly. And cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Not most of your unrighteousness. Not not 99% of your unrighteousness. All of your unrighteousness. That's the only good news. LA Times doesn't have any good news like that. No newspaper does. No college, seminary, whatever has that in and of itself. The Lord Jesus came into the world to seek and to save the lost. To save sinners. But only broken and contrite people who see their own wicked heart. And turn to him. Prepare your heart for Resurrection Day. It's two days away. Jesus is in the tomb at this moment. Of course, in the scripture on Friday. Of course, we know he's already resur- already resurrected. But we're celebrating. This is why we worship on Sunday. Not because it's the first day of the week or because of anything else or because it's the Sabbath. Saturday is the Sabbath, not Sunday. We worship as Christians, as followers of Christ, because he rose on Sunday crucified on Friday, today, celebrated the Passover last night, and he will raise two days now. And everyone who trusts in him will also have newness of life, both here and in eternity. Be against the world for the world. I hope you found this helpful. Take care.